there is a, seems to be a natural curiosity. It's either that or you're never satisfied. Is it, what would you say to that? But probably could, could be both. Okay. One thing maybe you've noticed, and I'm not saying like, maybe you've checked this out, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you've it. noticed this, Paul. But um, <laughs> no, um, you're, you're obviously a very high level musician and I love hearing um, your take on things. And I think you're absolutely right. I, but I, the thing about me, Paul, is that I like, I like improvising. And I, and when I say that, I mean, I really want to improvise. I don't want to show up and play riffs. And so I typically don't play drum riffs and right. I want to, when I find myself laying into all the languages that I know and study and I go, oh, okay, well, I'll just, you know, I'll find that space, that safe space of all the stuff I've checked out and all the things I want. That's fine. But for me, um, I want to be able to be in a moment musically and be able to explore every aspect of what can take place and have the role of the drum set reversed with the piano and reversed with the bass and, and have a dialogue rather than the, the just the sort of like classic support role and right. then this person blows and this person blows and then we trade and then we're out or whatever. I've never wanted to be a part of um, the, the, the trope laden way of going about artwork. I want to try, sometimes I fail miserably, but I want to have drama in there. Like I want to put it out there where there's, you know, I use Jack Jeanette as a great example. I think it's someone who plays very dramatically. Like you could tell he's not just like playing all the stuff he knows he can pull off. He's actually using real drama. Like sometimes he's just like, you can hear it. It's like, it's just like going for something and it kind of clangs around back. Yeah. 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 Like wonderful because you know, he's not sitting there going, check this out that I worked out a million times or yeah. here's this gad riff that I worked out from my right. video. It's like, man, it's not interesting to me. It's not enough for me. I mean, I'm into it on the level of like, yeah, hell right. yes. Yeah, yeah. That. But for me, it's like, if I see somebody just playing recycled stuff that I've heard a million times by the person who invented it, mm. I'm just like, so you're, you're doing an impression of what you think is necessary for this. And when you're in an improvisational musical setting, it was one thing if you're doing a session and you're like, you've got a, 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 an agenda for the, for the leader, or you've got an, an agenda for the session you got to do, then I'm in all the way. You Those do, are the gold posts, right? Yeah, Those are the gold gotta posts. Some, you got to do a pur purdy thing, or you got to do a bottom thing, or you got to do a, you got to sit down and play a Shelly Mann style West Coast thing, or you got to, I get it. We can all right. sit there and reference all of our heroes all day long. Yep. But for me, I started to realize my heroes were always the risk takers. Paul Motion, yep. the sort of postmodern thinking cats, okay? Like Dewey Redmond, the Keith Jarrett American Quartet, Motion, of course, one of my great heroes. Yep. You know, Joey Barron, Dijonette, the second, second wave, Billy Hart, Al Foster, and then the Rock Zone, Stuart Copeland, Jim Keltner, Steve Jordan. These guys where you could tell when they had a moment to do a fill or something, it was completely idiosyncratic and personal. Yeah. yeah. Like anytime Steve Jordan plays a fill, no one plays that fill, even though it's just some s simple – you know, but a bop, boom, bing. It's like, it's never sounds that, it's not that simple. There's right. something, it's like Chuck Berry. There's something else going on there. Originality, man. Exactly. And I want to be a part of that. I've always wanted to be a part of that tribe where when you sit down, you know, you're going to hear me, you're hopefully going to hear something you haven't heard before because I haven't necessarily heard it or dealt with it before. And that relationship of being willing to fail in the moment and being willing to have the thing be alive and not necessarily always getting nailed. Yeah, right, right, right. It's like, man, then the epiphany happens when it's like, woo, what was that? <laughs> yeah, right.